Brian Dykowitz is with us, CIO of Dunham Associates Investment Council, taking a look at what's going on here in the market. Look, on Friday, we saw yet another record. The S&P 500 had its 15th record close. Um, the S&P, uh, yeah, that was the S&P 15th record close. The NASDAQ had another all-time high, second day in a row, too, uh, um, last week as well. What do you think is going on here, and where do you think we're headed? Sure. Hi, Nicole. So, yeah, in terms of the uh, the direction of the economy, I mean, we're obviously kind of excited with the volatility and uncertainty that's going on. And we're really seeing that on the equity side. I mean, you talk about hitting higher highs um, with the VIX going down as low as it has. I mean, I haven't seen VIX levels like this since pre-pandemic. So when you think about it from that perspective, there's a lot of optimism in the equity markets. That also means there's a lot of priced in optimism in the equity markets. And so we're a little concerned on that side in terms of, you know, we'll say short term pockets to the downside. And I would say that anybody who's doing allocating at this point, which we obviously do a lot of allocating, you'd be taking a lot of that growth or high octane stuff off the table a little bit in favor of things like value and maybe even things like small caps, which later in the year might benefit from a declining rate Fed. Right. As we talk about the Fed, we talk about bonds, we talk about concerns there, too. And so, you know, we want to look at these these uh, stocks in terms of the, you know, future earnings. Sure, you hear a lot of the positive from the, the gentleman you heard before. But, you know, our view is that overall, uh, we're going to see a lot of headwinds in the short term and a good rest of the year. Yeah, and look, consumers have really shown their resiliency. They're out shopping. They're using credit cards and even acquiring credit card debt and leaving balances. And we're seeing some delinquencies, too. But home sales, particularly new home sales, where sometimes the home builders can give you a deal. But um, home sales fluctuate, yes, based on mortgage rates and availability. But I think that we're off the highs on the mortgage rates, right? And that, too, spring selling season is upon us, right? People are still out there looking. Yes, that's exactly right. So we, we do see home sales, you know, that, that should be a pickup. I mean, obviously, with rates coming down a bit, that should feed that. Um, unfortunately, you know, you have a lot of people out there who have already refinanced, and so they're reluctant to uh, to sell because they're they're really thrilled with their 2.75 or 3% mortgages. So that may keep um, inventory of new housing a little on the lower end and make it a little more difficult for people trying to enter the market at maybe a depressed price that they think they might be getting soon. Yeah, and so in a higher rate environment, because we are higher for longer right now, um, what is your advice to investors? Sure. So on the fixed income side, which is probably my biggest concern for investors, is you know that, that's where the move index, we talk about volatility on the... Uh, on the fixed income side and rate un uncertainty, I think that's an area that could still bite a bit. I know a lot of people have been moving heavily towards duration. They believe that the duration trade has been the way to go. Unfortunately, it's it comes with a lot of volatility and it's whipsawing investors around. So people who can't stomach those wild swings, especially to the downside, those investors are maybe in a little bit of, for a shock as the Fed does continue to keep that higher for longer rhetoric and not give them that relief, or I should say the reward, in regard to principal appreciation as rates do decline. Um, so from our perspective, we do see that happening, obviously, latter half of the year. We're not you know, too different from everybody else. If you look at the uh, CME FedWatch tool, that's showing the same kind of 75% you know, chance of a Fed drop um, come June. Right, and when it comes to equities, what do you tell folks? Yeah, so on the equity side, it's going to be diversify, use your alternatives, and use your value. Those unloved asset classes, um, those are things that we've been kind of shoveling more towards because we, do, we don't we do view the, uh, I guess, when the Fed drops rates, that it's going to be only in the same sectors that have done well that are going to perform better. We do think it's going to be broad-based. We do see that benefiting value and small caps as well. And then you keep hearing things. You talked about MAG-7 earlier. Um, I was also, you know, a lot of news about granolas, right? And so I think foreign investments will be important as well in a larger amount than we've seen in the past. Right. I mean, what kind of market do you expect? Because we saw Bank of America raising their year-end target. A lot of the folks I speak to are relatively bullish for this year. No, they don't think it's going to be a 20% year, but they don't see some catastrophe at the end of the year either. Um, how are you positioning, uh, you know, are you more defensive or are you more aggressive at this point? Yeah. So from an overall perspective, we actually are a little more defensive. So we've taken a lot of our equity exposure off for those allocations that we can. 
But in regard to, you know, overall year, I don't see it being a terrible year either in terms of, I mean, we're already almost halfway there to a 20% year, right? So when you think from that perspective, um, is there another five or 6% total left over? Maybe. But in terms of short term blips, I still think you could see that five to 10% or worse downturn in the interim. I, I don't think it's going to be an easy path between now and we'll say election. Um, I think that time period is going to be a little bit bumpy. If the market pulls back five or 10 percent, what kinds of names would you pick up? Right. So if I get that kind of a pullback and it's broad based, I'm going to go into my small caps a little more. That would be the area that I'm favoring the most, um, mainly on that value side. I just, you know, these unloved darlings, if you would, that haven't seen any breath of fresh air in a long time. I think a lot of those sectors in there are poised to do pretty well um, again on the latter half of the year. So I'd like to pick them up cheaper if I can now. Yeah, it's great to see you, Ryan. Thank you so much. Ryan Dykeman, CIO of Dunham & Associates Investment Council. Thank you very much.